So um, what I'm going to talk about now is, is basically a line follower board for a UK Marsbot using the standard board, but modifying it so that it can actually run either on a full size line or a half size line. Um, uh, and I'll take you through that. Apologies if this is a bit rough and ready because I certainly haven't rehearsed it, although I have done the slides. So um, first thing to say is that standard line follow board on UK Marsbot is, is quite capable of following a half size line. It seems to have uh, quite good resilience on that. <clears throat> the thing it can't do, of course, is detect uh, start and finish markers and the radius markers because they're they're not where they expect them to be. So I just set myself a challenge really of creating um, an adapter board that could be added to the standard UK Mars line following board uh, and manage both uh, full size line and half size line without having to uh, faddle around with the hardware. So um, if this looks a bit fuzzy, it is. It's because it's blown up from the from the rules. But this is uh, this is basically the, the the configuration of a full size line, a 19 millimeter track, with uh, now 40 millimeter markers, 40 millimeters away from the side of the line, uh, and that's the uh, the line that we, we follow now. Not to scale necessarily, but not bad. Um, this is what happens when you run on a half size line. So you have a 10 millimeter line uh, with a 20 millimeter gap and a 20 millimeter marker. So you can see that the, the radius markers or the start finish markers are in fact um, not gonna be seen by any sensible sensor looking for a full size line marker. Um, so, Basically, you have got to do something about those markers, but fortunately, um, the line sensor board doesn't use all the available I.O. on UK Marsbot. Uh, we do actually have two spare analog lines in that we're not using. So this is a, a modified schematic from uh, the UK Marsbot line board. Uh, and I'll just take you through the different changes on here. I hope you can see my mouse moving around. But basically up in the emitter section in the top left hand corner here, um, add two more emitters. Uh, so you've got one set of emitters for the radius marker and the, and the start finish marker for full size and a separate uh, pair of emitters for the half size markers. And for those, I've literally just paralleled those off uh, the existing uh, current limiting resistors. Y you're not struggling for signal of the uh, uh, start finish marker or the radius marker you're literally looking for is it there or isn't it there and the thresholds are pretty good so you're not going to be too worried about the reduced current there um, there's, there's bags of signal coming back if, you, if your uh, detectors are in the right place so that side's um, fairly simple uh, on the detector side uh, literally just added in uh, two photo transistors uh, and hook those back to the spare analog inputs that are available. So uh, split across here, you've got A4 and A5. They're actually spare on the, um, uh, on the connector on the UK Marsbot uh, and they're picking up uh, new sensors. And then down on the motherboard connector by adding um, literally those two lines Turns out you want to add a, a, a five volt line as well, which is conveniently available at the end of the Marsbot connector. Uh, you can put a, a four pin uh, standard plug on there and pick up the lines that you need. So the actual uh, circuitry and the schematic is, is, is fairly straightforward. Uh, the lines are there and available. Uh, you just have to, to uh, hook them in. Um, when I translated to strip board, I was looking basically to get, uh, so this is one side, start finish, the, the radius side is a direct mirror of that. Uh, and you can see basically the two LEDs are picking up uh, the same signal. Uh, they're coming off uh, the transistor 
uh, and going through a shared uh, currently emitting resistor through there. So this this connector J2 in the middle dealing with the LEDs. And then uh, what's happening here is that the on the detector side, the existing circuitry that's on, on board is actually used for the half size uh, detection. And then an additional resistor and phototransistor uh, is added uh, outboard where you can actually get some room and some space for bits to pick up the, uh, the line uh, markers for the full size line. Uh, you also need to pick up five volts. So um, there's an extra connector there picking up five volts. So a relatively small piece of strip board uh, to be mounted onto the standard board, giving basically giving you uh, a pair of uh, detectors on the start finish side or the radius side. I'll just pause in case there's any questions here. No, nope. can someone give me a thumbs up that everything's coming through okay? I can hardly, okay, thanks Peter. Okay, construction, um, relatively straightforward. There are the two bits of strip board. To take the signals off, off that uh, PCB, uh, I'm using two, uh, basically uh, five pin, they're extended header pins because they're longer that way, with the middle pin pushed out because that's what we have. We have two pairs on the 0.1 inch pitch and you push out the middle one and they'll, they'll, they'll slot in there nicely. Um, I jigged that up using breadboard uh, just to pin it in place, try and keep everything roughly orthogonal. Uh, and then solder the uh, pins into the uh, Vera board. Uh, and once they're soldered in and held in place, just pull the plastic black plastic separator strip off the off the header strip so you've got a thing that will plug straight into your board and then if you solder it up with the strip board markers I was showing you there you can see basically you've got got your two emitters your two transistors the additional resistor put on there um, and, and in this particular point I have actually cut off the the pins on the uh, on the bottom of the board the bit that will face down to the track and they're on, you can't see them, but they're behind here uh, for going back into the into the board. And uh, I just ran that up on a standard piece of breadboard just to make sure everything was firing as it should be uh, before sticking it onto the uh, onto the uh, PCB. Um, one of the issues there is that um, those markers for the uh, uh, half size line are quite tight in uh, so you need to move the the sensor board in my case which is always very close against the front of the of the robot chassis board you have to actually have to create extra holes uh, to move it out um, to give yourself a bit more space and it also turns out I didn't move it out quite enough hence there's a bit of uh, butchery gone on there to make a bit of space to get uh, LEDs to sit down nicely over, over the board. Um, <clears throat> but then when you mount the board onto the onto the chassis there, you can see uh, here are your inner markers for the half size line. And then on the outside, you've got the full size line detectors uh, looking down over there. And normally my line sensor would be right up against the board. They're actually a bit further out to make room for this these two pairs that are snuck up against the board there. Uh, and that's a top view. Um, bit of use of uh, hot melt glue to do a bit of strain relief on the cables. Shouldn't really be any strain on them, but uh, these things do happen. And uh, uh, the only other real complication was uh, you obviously need five volts on both sides. So I did that by taking it off and splitting it. Um, you yeah, might want to think about actually taking it to one side and then just routing it straight across to the other side. Might be a, might have been a tidier solution to getting that uh, five volt supply across. And uh, that's the board there on the front. You can see uh, I've used a little bit more um, hot melt glue just to make sure there is separation between the uh, strip board 
and the underside of the PCB. Uh, it's all supported on the, um, the four header pins here that soldered through, uh, but I didn't want it uh, bending or pushing back or creating any nasty shorts on the, on the underside of the PCB. Um, it tells me here I should be playing you a video, so give me a second. I'm going to pop this off present and uh, and put a video up for you. Uh, videos are notoriously shaky when we try and share them like this, but I'll, I'll, I'll try and give it a go and uh, see if we can uh, if I can get it to play. Okay. So uh, the first thing I had to do in the um, in terms of software was to figure out what to do about which which version of the uh, of the line are we running on. So what I've actually done is uh, just introduced a step on firing up the robot that says uh, put it down on, on a marker. Uh, the blue light shows it's actually on a half size marker. Uh, press the button and now the, the, the robot is is programmed to run with half size markers. And this is the explore run on the half size track. And we managed to stop. So we've obviously managed to see the marker. And this is the explore run, which you might just, the, sorry, the fast run, you might just see a slight acceleration on this straight at the bottom. Uh, hard to see on this track because there isn't uh, a lot to play with. Uh, this is the same board on the full size, again, calibrated for now for full size. So when we press the button, there's no blue light. Um, so that's now going to run as a full size uh, line follower. And even harder, I think, to see the the acceleration there. I'm just going to try to come out of here if I can. Um, so really, I need to wrap up with uh, the, the classic stuff of what would I do differently. And there are a few things. One is I'd think about using three millimeter instead of five millimeter parts, and then the butchery on the bottom of the board wouldn't have to be quite so bad. Um, the, other, the other option again is instead of having the uh, marker detectors front to back, you could actually put them side by side, which again would reduce the uh, infringement on the main board and that might improve things. And it turns out that I put the header strips in slightly the wrong place as well. So my uh, half size line markers work, uh, but they should be looking a little bit further out than they are. So I've actually, uh, I've actually mounted that in slightly the wrong place. But um, other than that, uh, as you can see, I think uh, it manages to do the job. Um, I think that's me done. Uh, any questions? Anybody? We okay? Not exactly a question, but just a bit, bit of information. Uh, the uh, Palolu 8 sensor array that I described and have used in previous robots is actually just the right width for... Uh, hang on, get it right. Just the right width for a half size sensor array with the outer sensors just being in the right position for the start finish line and the curve detect uh marks right. and the inner four uh being used just for the for the line itself so that's that's my half size uk mars box right yeah i've just got a quick comment uh, ian mm -hmm. um, if you put 
tipex or a bit of black tape between the LED and the photo transistor, you'll get a slightly better signal to noise ratio out of them if you're ever having problems um, with stray reflections off black. Yeah, I have to say, I've, my, it's incredibly simple. Though. The, the line follower board that we put for, for, the, for the line follower basic, it's essentially what I used on SMLS and then tied it up. And, and so it's simple because I, I designed I design that. But it has, it is quite robust in the sense that in terms of following the line, you've only got the one emitter. And so you never need to calibrate it because it's, it, it, basically I'm looking, you're looking at the light coming back from the two detectors on the same emitter. Uh, so if the reflections generally go up, they go up together and if they go down, they go down together. So it turns out it, not to be short of signal, uh, but then again, they are running pretty close to the line. Um, so I, I used to worry about putting stuff between the emitter and the detector, and I've given up worrying about it because the signals are absolutely fine. And on the radius marks and start finish markers, there's absolutely oodles, there's oodles of, uh, of signal. Uh, I, I sort of automatically put heat shrink tubing over the LED just as a yeah matter. yeah <laughs> yeah I, I I did that on uh, for different reasons on pick one, um, and it made us a bit of difference. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of said, well, I'll save myself the effort of doing that because it doesn't seem to matter. But I, I, I imagine there can be. But this the, the self regulate the self calibration of the thing using a proportionate return of reflected light has proved to be pretty robust and it and it obviously works when the line's 10 millimeters wide or 19 millimeters wide so are you using that calibration on the marker sensors as well uh, there is no calibration um, <laughs> the marker sensors do have to have a, a value i use a fixed value on the marker sensors um, but you're really only interested in seeing it or not seeing it on the marker sensors you're not worried about how how, how well you're seeing it doesn't matter is, is it is it there or isn't it there um more important um i'm going to say more important maybe in the crossover detection um not taking action until you see the trailing edge of the marker rather than doing something as soon as you see a leading edge of a marker um but of that aside uh they seem to be fine Okay. Anybody else? Nope. Okay, let's move on. Um